Healthy debates have always been a part of programming culture. Strongly typed versus dynamically typed. Functional programming versus object-oriented programming. Mac versus Windows. But in some cases, particularly around technologies that are competitive with each other, things can get really heated and often create conflict in the workplace. Things like React versus Vue or Less versus SAS, you can get strong proponents and opponents on either side of those. So in this blue collar coder, we're gonna talk about programmer fights and how to mitigate those. So these conflicts are generally about change versus the status quo. And there are four primary roles of individuals involved in these fights. There's the instigator, that's the person who wants to bring the change. There are the defenders, those are the folks that wanna defend the status quo. There are the folks on the sidelines, and then there are the peacemakers. All right, so to all my programmer fighters out there, the instigators and the defender. Listen, I get it, I've been on both sides of it. I've been the instigator who wants to bring in new change. I saw something really cool on YouTube or Medium and I tried it out and it was everything that they said it was. And it was gonna be so great. But when I tried to bring it up in the Monday morning meeting, pushback I got was really rough and things started to spiral out of control as I tried to defend the idea. Now in that moment, your choice is either to say, whoa, okay, and basically back off. Whatever, peace, God bless. But if you don't wanna do that, if you actually think that this is something you wanna get into, my advice for you is to reach out to the prime defender and see what would have made the argument more compelling for that person. Maybe it's a proof of concept. You can go and build that out, bring it into the app, and demonstrate that there's real value there. But get that conversation going. Now to my defenders out there, hey, I get it too. You have the momentum on the team, everything's going great. And from the side, this person comes in, they're trying to introduce this new technology, and you're like, whoa, this is not the right time for that. Well again, realize that this person is coming from a good place. They're trying to help the team, they're trying to help the company. So you need to open those lines of communication, smooth over the conflict, see what they're trying to get to, and then maybe down the road, that's something that you can invest in. But in either case, instigator or defender, realize that at the point of conflict, you've already lost. Right or wrong, you brought conflict into the workplace, and the reason that you're there is not to have conflict, it's to serve the customer. That's the reason the business exists and why you're getting paid. So you've got to fix this mess that you've created. That's the number one goal, and most of the time that starts with communication. So if you're on the sidelines of one of these things, my advice for you is to stay on the sidelines if you can. Move the fleet away from the Death Star. You know, just ignore it or mute it, that's absolutely fine. You're actually gonna be held to account if you could have stayed on the sidelines, but you didn't. But of course, for folks like team leads and engineering managers, this is probably something you're going to have to deal with. Open war is upon you, whether you would risk it or not. But there is a way that you can make a win out of it, and that's by being the peacemaker. And that starts with, one, not taking a side. That is a no-win scenario. And then secondly, don't belittle or downplay the arguments. They may seem trivial to you, but if you treat them that way, you're not gonna win either. Next, in terms of what you can do, first off, you wanna shift the argument in time. You wanna go and schedule a meeting, maybe a couple of days down the road, and that's gonna give some people some time to cool off and collect their thoughts and consider the idea. And then secondarily, you wanna elevate the conversation out of something like Slack. Text messaging is the absolute worst way to have one of these conversations. And then third, you wanna broaden the scope of the conversation to include business terms, because this really is a business question. So you wanna involve things like return on investment, total cost of ownership, the hiring landscape, the business opportunity lost, and that will help the engineers understand the complete impact of these changes and why it's so important to make the right change the right way. Of course, at the end of the day, the best advice that I have about these programmer fights is to do what my original mentor told me, which is to pick your battles and know what you want to win. Strange game. The only winning mood is not to play. Of course, these are just my thoughts when it comes to programmer fights. I wanna hear from you in the comments down below about what you think and what you have experienced and what has helped you mitigate the cost of these programmer fights. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, smash that subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out. I can't believe I actually said smash that subscribe button. <laughs> 
It's so YouTube, it's so cliche. <laughs> I haven't worn these in a long time. 